I'm beach fishing with nothing but beach worms for bait. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne, and in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you some amazing benefits of using beach worms. If you're finding any of my videos helpful or instructional and they're helping your fishing, make sure that you like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I really appreciate it. Let's get started. So I've come down to the beach and my plan is to catch a few fresh worms and then, then choose some nice water to cast my line out. I'm pretty much going to be fishing at low tide again, which I, I really like doing of late. So I've, I can already see there's a lot of worms here, so I won't take long <laughs> to catch some bait, which is good. Now, I'm actually in the process of redoing a whole revamped beach worming masterclass course. I created a course about five years ago when I first started doing this, which is excellent and a lot of people have benefited from that course. However, I've learnt so much from lessons that I've been giving to people, where they fail, you know, the key areas that they need to work on. So I'm producing a whole new beachworming course. It's going to have about probably 15 videos in it. So if you'd like to get on the wait list for that course, it'll be out very soon. And if you've already purchased my beach swimming course, I'm gonna send you a really good offer that nobody else will get because you've already got the course. I'll just make it really easy for you to get all the extra information. So as I go through this video today, there are a couple of really important things about using beach worms for bait. The first one is that I'm not sure that there's another bait, certainly on the east coast of Australia that we can use that you can catch the variety of species of fish that you can catch with beach worms. So many different fish will eat beach worms. When you're using other baits like a, a piece of fish fillet or a pilchard, there's certain fish species that you will catch, you know, but I reckon with worms you catch more fish than any other bait. So that in itself is a massive benefit when you're using beach worms because you cover quite a few bases as far as which fish that you're possibly going to catch. Now I'm just going to grab a few worms and then I'm going to talk about some of the other really important things relating to beach worms. There's a lot of worms here. <laughs> I just need some water. Now there's a whole bunch more worms just here. Always got to wait for a break in the waves but I think I'm going to get a good break now. I can hear a wave coming, but now look, heaps of time, just gonna grab him. So look, while he's not massive, he's a really good, that's a really good worm for bait, just a nice thickness. Now, um, I've noticed over the last couple of years that the cost of beach worms has gone up a lot. Uh, if you can't catch them yourself and you've gotta buy them, they're basically about, a worm like that will cost you $7, one worm. So it's really worth actually investing the time to learn. I was on this beach last week and the sand conditions were quite different and there was hardly a worm in sight. So it's amazing how it just changes even in a few days. Who knows where they go, but... Um, But there's, I waved my bait around today and there's just heaps of worms straight away. So yeah, I found that to be the case when I was in Sydney. Some beaches have zillions of worms one day. And I don't know why, if it's because the ocean actually brings in another layer of sand and it's a lot deeper and it takes them a while to come to the surface. I don't think anyone really knows why that is. It's just a matter of coming down to the beach and having a look. And I've chosen a spot on the beach here, which is nice and flat. It's quite different to just up behind me there where the bank is a lot steeper. There's lots of worms here. I don't want to spend too much time worming. I want to get fishing. Okay. These are not very big worms, really. 
These worms are relatively, relatively small, but they're certainly fine for bait. They're not huge. I'd like to look and see if I can find some bigger ones. It's always exciting when you're catching big worms. <laughs> that sounds weird, doesn't it? Uh, it really does. <laughs> There he is. Looking in, he's having a bit of a nibble. Come on, have a bite. Oh, he broke. He actually broke off. I think it's time to go fishing. It's uh, half past three, it's pretty much dark by about five o'clock. So I'm just gonna roll these uh, worms in a bit of sand, give them a bit of a crumb. Makes it easier to hold them to put on the hook when you um when you get when you crumb them. On the way here I had a quick look at another beach and there's some reasonable looking water there, a little bit more depth of water, a nice trough with a sandbar just behind it. Where I am here, there's a little bit of grit, it's just too shallow. There's not Yeah, I just think it looks a bit average. I think I'd probably catch something. But it's pretty shallow and there's actually still one more hour to go before low tide. So I'm going to jump back in the car and go to the other beach, which is really only five minutes from here. I'm going to throw these leftover pilchards out. Like I might feed the seagulls with them. And uh, give this stocking a little bit of a rinse so I can use it again. Look at those guys. They're having a feed. <laughs> I love, I just absolutely love a bit of green water with a shallow sandbar right behind it, stirring up all that sand and all the food. That's exactly what I've got just here. I've walked past some other water down there. I could see that there was a current running from right to left quite strongly, but I won't have that situation here. Oh, it just looks really awesome. Um, just stirring up the food for the fish. I'm gonna aim to cast to the sandbar and just pull off the edge of it into the deep water. I'm going to chuck this line out and just leave it in my rod holder because I have a second rod I'm going, to, I'm going to set up. I want to make sure that that'll stay in nice and firm. I've got two lovely worm baits. One up pretty high actually. I'm going to give that a go. Water's starting to get a little bit chilly. I'm going to walk out a little bit further, so I'm waiting for this wave to dissipate a little bit. It's going to wander out a little bit more and put in a reasonably big cast. Yeah, I landed in some great looking water there. The second big benefit I'd like to talk to you about with beach worms going to set that drag. I don't know how long it's going to take to get a bite, but the second really big benefit of using beach worms is that they're such a thin aerodynamic bait, it gives you the ability to cast distance because there's very little wind resistance when you have a beach worm bait on compared to larger baits like pilchards or fish fillets or different things. It's definitely a huge plus. You don't always have to put in a big cast, but if there's some amazing looking water, it means you have the ability to lay into it and really cast a long way. And not only that, but you can actually use two baits and still achieve that because the bait is so, you know, like wind resistance, it's, it's, it flies through the air so well. Even with two baits, you can cast a long way. And in this case here, you can see there's white water out the back, there's a sandbar, but in front of it, in between the sandbar and me, there's a trough of green water, which I expect that there's gonna be a few fish sniffing around in that trough, looking for food, 
There'll be small bait fish that are wanting to hide from big fish. It's going to pull that forward just a little bit. So I'm going to leave that there to do its thing. And I'm going to get my second rod ready. I only plan to fish for probably maximum one hour, maybe 45 minutes. But I fully expect to catch some fish in there. Hang on. Yeah. Now sometimes, I've got a fish, but sometimes when you use two hooks, if you just wait a minute before you wind it in, that fish is on the line going around like this and the other bait's wobbling around and a, a second fish can grab it so you can end up catching two fish. That's what my father used to do when he was fishing for whiting. He'd hook one and then he'd wait when he used two hooks so that a second one could grab it. Now this is possibly a salmon, I'm not sure. But we'll see, oh, yeah it is. Okay, so that was my first cast, and it was in the water for maybe two or three minutes. Um, and you can see that this salmon has taken my top hook, and I still have a bottom hook with a perfectly good worm bait on it. So it's taken the top one, and I can see that it's actually swallowed it. You can tell that he swallowed it, because you can't see the hook, and also there's some blood coming out of his gills. But so I'll just look after this guy quickly. I need to reload this chuck it back out again and hopefully I'll get time to rig up my other rod. So the rods I'm using today, I've got a 12 foot kind of medium to light beach rod. My other beach rod's 10 foot long. This one I've got spool with uh, 10, 10 kilo line, 20 pound line. That one's got 15 pound line, it's a little bit lighter. And I've been using a two hook setup with a star sinker, really a Paternoster style rig with a, a worm bait up the top, and then I've got a, a worm bait down the bottom. In this case, the, the sinker is running in between my two swivels. It's attached to a snap swivel and it's running between those two. I don't always rig it that way, and my other rods rig the same way as well. Alrighty, here we go. So I've had one cast, one fish, now I'll attempt to rig up my other rod. It's happening again. I'm gonna have to run, I'm gonna run down and get it. I've got another fish, maybe it's more than one. I didn't even get to put the line through the runners. How good is beach fishing? It's epic. <laughs> okay. What have we got? Do we have one or more? No, I've only got one this time. This time, um, 
This fish took the bottom bait, the last fish took the top bait. You can see they absolutely love worms, these guys. Very healthy fish. Man, they're strong. Really strong. A lot of muscle. Yeah, I think we're out of Thai fish cakes. <laughs> we need some more. Got a lovely, yummy, yummy beach worm. I actually try to like to try and put the hook in the worm's mouth, which I have in this case. I put the hook in its mouth. Just helps to thread the hook down the center of the worm. I try not to come out the sides of the worm. I want it to go completely on the hook. It's still a bit slippery. I could do with a bit of extra sand on this guy. Now I've actually pulled the hook up above the eye. The eye of the hook's there. So I've pulled the, the worm up the line a bit. It's a lovely big piece of worm. It's my top hook. Then I'm going to put the tail part of the worm on this bottom hook. I'll just stand over here a little bit. That one's hanging there. Get a little bit of sand on him. That'll make it a little bit easier for me. So this is the thinner part of the worm because it doesn't have the worm's head. So you have to be a little bit gentle with feeding it on. Put the eye out of the side of the worm a little bit. A little bit of brown looking bloody stuff coming out. But uh, I think I'll just leave that like that. It's just a lovely bait. The fish couldn't resist that. So I had two casts and got two fish pretty quickly. I just didn't even have time to rig up my other rod. So I've actually stopped fishing purely so that I could rig up my other line. I just wasn't getting any time in between casting it out and getting a bite. So now I'm going to chuck this one out. I walk down there with my other rod and uh, it's a lighter line. I won't be casting as far. I'm just going to flick along the edge and um, yeah, I don't think it'll take long to get a bite, that's for sure. That looks amazing out there. Really, really good, really fishy. Alrighty, so... Where am I going to land? Yep, that's a pretty good area. Okay, we'll see how long it takes. Oh, here we go. <laughs> All right. I've obviously got one fish. I'm going to let it sit there for a second. I reckon there'll be some brim out there. Okay, so what have I got this time? Can you guess what this might be? I love these kind of medium medium weight beach rods. They're a lot of fun to use. Come here, boy. Whoa. This one's a fair bit bigger. Quite a fat fish. 
can see that worm bait there right in the corner of the mouth. I can barely fit my hand around him to grab him. It's going to come up here a little bit. It's really fat. Can you see how fat that fish is? A lot of meat in those shoulders, heaps of meat. See along their back, they have all these really beautiful spots along their back. I think they look a little bit similar to a WA herring, but much bigger. Maybe some of my WA friends can let me know if that's the case in the comments. I'll just rebait this one, get it back out again. I have my other rod rigged and baited. I still haven't been able to use it yet. We'll see what other species are lurking out there. Okie dokie, let's do the countdown. Countdown, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Now I'm actually going to cast this one out this time. I'm going to try casting close to shore with this little fella. Flick. Yeah. Ooh. With this lighter rod, I've just cast a bit closer to shore. And I'll just see if I get any bites there. I better stand next to the other rod. I think I'll stand here and have a rest for a minute. I've been up and down the beach. Oh, hang on, I'm getting a bite on this one. And, and one on that one as well. Hang on, what's going on here? That's getting a bite, and I'm just having a bite on this one too. Look at that. It's got a fish. I've got one on this rod as well. So... Yep, there's a fish on there. Fish on that one, fish on this one. I'm just going to chill. <laughs> oh, what's going on here? Man, have I lost the fish? No. It's just going right up the beach here. My drag is going. It's a silent drag. You can't really hear it. You wouldn't believe this. Wow. This is my light line. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a beast. My gosh. Whoa. It's a salmon towing a brim. That's the biggest salmon so far in this session. I don't think I'll get my hand around this guy. He's, he's huge. He swallowed the hook and he's towing this little brim. Dead set when I was pulling him in, it's like the brim was water skiing behind the salmon. <laughs>
That'd be a legal size brim, but I'm going to let him go. So I'm going to, I'm going to let this brim go. He's, he's legal size, but he can go back and get bigger. And that guy's a beast. I've got a fish on my other rod, but I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> Oh, how am I going to grab this guy? Oh my gosh. I'm going to pick this guy up. Show you how big this salmon is. He's a monster. But this is only um, seven kilo line, so it's a pretty light outfit. I just had that double hook up on my other line. Finally got around to grabbing this one. You can see there's a fish there. Getting them all sizes. Okay. You can see that worm. Most of them have been hooked in the side of the mouth, but some of them, like this guy with the worm down his throat. I'm just using my finger like one of those hook removers. There you go, got it. I'm gonna let him go because I've got heaps of fish. But I'll keep fishing to see if I can get some more brim and other, other fish. Another fantastic benefit of using a beach worm bait is that also, because of its low profile, there's minimal drag in the surf. It doesn't get caught in the current so much, so you get less drift, which is, I guess, similar to the casting value, but that's definitely a really good point. Rather than a big bulky bait, if there's a little bit of current, you tend to hold the bottom better. So that's another great reason to use beach worms. Alrighty, I'm gonna chuck this back out again. I'm gonna put him back in the rod holder and grab my other rod, which I think I've already rebaited. It's gonna wind up the slack line. Just pull it just a little bit. Check the drag, I wanna have it pretty tight. Whack that in. I haven't actually rebaited this one, so I will while I'm watching this rod. No bites as yet. Although that's a bite now. Yep. Yep, getting a bite now. The line's gone slack, so the fish has swum towards towards me. See I noticed that the line went slack, and that's because the fish has swum this way. Just gonna hold it. That may have been a brim bite. Just definitely had a good bite and the swish, the fish, not the swish, the fish swam this way. Alrighty, okay, well I'm gonna leave that back in here and finish baiting up. I caught the worms on the beach next to this one and I've actually only been fishing, well probably about 38 minutes, I think. I've got plenty of fish to take home. Had bites every single cast. Although I haven't had a bite on this cast yet. And I think I had a brim bite on that rod before. I was just letting it do its own thing. But it didn't uh, hook itself. When I was living in Sydney, plenty of salmon in Sydney, but they just seem to be so thick down here on the south coast. Hang on, my line's gone super slack. What the story? What's this? It's gone completely slack. Something has obviously swum in with it. Yep. 
as I was saying, <laughs> when I was fishing all the time on the northern beaches in Sydney, caught a lot of different species on worms. You still get quite a lot of different species down here on worms as well, but it seems to be the salmon down here are a lot more prevalent than on the northern beaches. I, I caught a lot of, um, I used to catch luteric off the beach on worms, some big luteric. Also, oh, I think this is just a small salmon. You used to catch Trevally. Trevally absolutely love beach worms. My father used to use Trevally, uh, used to use worms for bait at a, actually out in the ocean, fishing for Trevally out of a boat, and they loved them. So I catch quite a lot of Trevally. Also, obviously, you get brim whiting, flathead, Trevally, tar wine. Mulloway love beach worms. A lot of Mulloway are caught up on the mid north and far north coast using beach worm baits and you still catch them down here on beach worm baits as well. I got spooled at the next beach last year. I had an aggressive bite on a beach worm, obviously not a salmon, and it spooled me <laughs> on 15 pound line. That was undoubtedly a mulloway. It wouldn't have been anything else the way it bit and the way it fought. I just couldn't stop it, but that was not a small one. Anyways, I'm just going to better put this guy back in the water. Yeah, as I was saying, I think that geographically things differ a little bit. While I've been fishing with beach worms down here, I've caught brim, trevally, um, whiting, salmon. I've actually hooked tailor, which is pretty rare usually on worms. I've got flathead. I actually have caught luteric here as well, because you often get them in the surf. I think my other rod's got a fish, so I better get down there. Something's going on. The line's gone a bit slack, and it was wobbling around, so we'll see. Yeah, it's gone very slack. Have I got a fish? Yep. I'm on. What is it? <laughs> this is one of those uh, less desirable species. He's got a few spots on him, this guy. I'm just going to flip him over and hopefully I can get my hook out okay. You can see the worm bait there. So I can see my hook sticking out there, so they've got a pretty tough mouth. Grab this guy. There you go. You've got to watch the tail on these because they have a couple of barbs on them. I'm not going to touch the barb, but you can see those barbs on its tail. You don't want to get whacked. You can hold them really securely like that. So I've got my finger just, just beside its eye socket. I'm not hurting it. And you can see my thumb. I'm holding on to it quite strongly. My thumb is, I'm just, you can see I've got a grip like that. But it's a very safe way to grab a stingray. This is Simon. Simon the Stingray. <laughs> so I've had a, a fun time down here fishing and really beach worms are incredible because of the reasons I've mentioned in this video of being able to cast them a long way. They're low profile, low drag in the surf and really you do catch a big variety of species with them. Remember, if you'd like to be in the waitlist for my new beach worming course, just click the link for that. 
and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.